Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Setting your defaults for your vendors allows you to monitor the goods and services that you've received from your vendors and the money that you've paid to your vendors. You can set payment terms, aging guidelines, and more for each vendor. When you post to the accounts payable, it updates the journal and then posts it to the general ledger. The first part of setting the defaults for the accounts payables was done when the vendor defaults were set up. Since that is done, now we can turn to look at adding vendors. When you add new vendors, they will have their default information set to match the settings that are specified by your vendor defaults. You can change this information on a per vendor basis if necessary. Then all you will need to enter is information that's unique to each vendor. You add new vendors through the Maintain Vendors window within Sage 50. You can access this window by selecting Maintain from the menu bar and then choosing the Vendors command. Now at the top of the Maintain Vendors window, you'll see two text fields and one checkbox. The first text field is the vendor ID, which is the code that you entered to uniquely identify your vendors. There's also the name of the vendor, and this is the name that you want to show on reports and bills received from the vendor. The checkbox is called inactive, and that's the box that you check to make the vendor inactive so they won't appear within your vendor list. On the general tab, you can input the vendor's contact account number, and primary mailing address information into the fields provided. You can then enter the vendor type by entering a custom value into the vendor type field. This can be used in order to filter reports. You then set the 1099 type for vendors that need a 1099, such as subcontractors. The expense account field shown is the default general ledger account used for transactions with this vendor. You can change this on a per transaction level as needed. You can then enter the primary and secondary phone numbers for the vendor into the telephone 1 and 2 fields. You can enter a fax number into the fax field and specify an email address for the vendor. If available, you can enter the website for the vendor into the website field. You then enter the data that you wish to record for this specific vendor record into the customizable field section. Note that these fields are the ones that you created for your vendors when you set your vendor defaults. Now on the addresses tab, you can copy the vendor's mailing address to any one of the selected Remit To address lines that are shown. You can do this by selecting the desired Remit To address from the Copy Mailing Address To dropdown, and then simply clicking the adjacent Copy button. You can also manually add or edit the information that's recorded for the different Remit To addresses listed at the bottom of the Addresses tab, by clicking into the desired row and entering the information required into the column shown. Next you can click the History tab where you can access the Beginning Balances window for your vendors by clicking the Vendor Beginning Balances button that appears at the bottom of this tab. In the Vendor Beginning Balances window, you can enter the dates and amounts of bills that you received but have not yet paid to your vendors as of the start date of your company file. You will do this activity if you had one or more outstanding bills from a vendor which you owed as of the start date of your Sage 50 company file. Now just click the Save button to finish recording those bills and close the window when you're done. Now the History tab also tracks and shows your purchases, payments, and last payment information for the selected vendor. This tab will be updated every time you enter a transaction for the vendor. 
You can enter historical information when you're creating a new vendor if desired. After that, Sage 50 will track and show information about your recent transactions with this vendor on this tab. Next on the Purchase Info tab, you enter purchase information about your vendor. Here you assign the vendor's tax ID number if you have to send the vendor a 1099. You'll also enter your preferred method of shipping from them and your terms with this vendor. The tax ID number field is used for vendors that have a tax number that you must input if you plan on sending them a 1099 miscellaneous or 1099 interest form. The ship via dropdown is used to select the default shipping method used by this vendor to send you products. This is also a field that you can always change at the time of purchase as well. You can then set specific terms with this vendor if they differ from your vendor defaults by selecting the customized terms for this vendor choice that appears from the drop down within the terms and credit section. You can then set specific terms from this vendor into the area below the drop down. You can select how the vendor prefers forms sent to them by making a choice within the form options section. You can select either paper form or email. When you batch print items such as purchase orders from the select a reporter form window, this choice determines whether the forms will be displayed for printing or automatically emailed. When you've finished entering the vendor's information into the maintained vendor's window, you can click the Save button in the toolbar at the top of the window to save the information and leave it displayed on screen. Alternately, you can click the Save and New button to save the vendor's record and create a new blank vendor record to enter another new vendor if needed. When you're finished, simply close the window by clicking the Close button. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.